Hey, Coach, this is Trevor from CUTigers.com. Um, what, what do you remember about Coach Halfley from, from going head-to-head -head against him in, uh, in the playoff last year with Ohio State? And uh, how much of, of, of his defense have, have you seen in Boston College this season? Right. In, in preparation for Ohio State, the first thing that jumped out uh, at you was, was just how, how good their corners were, just how technically sound they were. Uh, and then it spread throughout the defense. They're very fundamentally sound. They were always in position. Uh, they were able to get pressure on the quarterback uh, with, uh, with four uh, and then be able to play, you know, mostly man coverage and then play a lot of cover three concepts. But biggest thing for those guys is is they were the, the DBs were very well coached. I know that's the position that he works with. Uh, you can tell they played with a lot of confidence, a lot of swagger. Uh, so that's what jumps out at you. And you see a lot of that resonating with uh, with BC right now. Uh, they're, they're lined up the way they're supposed to be. Um, they're communicating well. Uh, they're playing uh, They're playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, they're, staying, they're, they're playing man concepts, zone concepts. So the structure looks, uh, looks very, very similar. Uh, and you can see that all those guys have, have bought in, even some of the new guys that have, uh, that have transferred in uh, that may not have been, you know, part of the team last year. Uh, looks like he's brought, you know, some, some, uh, just some cohesion uh, for those guys, and, and they're doing a really good job. Tony, uh, Larry Williams here with TigerIllustrated.com. I know that the film gives you a more, much more refined look at, at the offensive line and other areas. What was the, I guess the post-film review uh, take on the offensive line from Saturday. You know, I think you know sometimes you get into a game, and and uh, you know the last two weeks I used Georgia Tech and this game here. It's it's not always as good, you know, as you think sometimes, and it's not always as bad as you think sometimes. But you don't have to watch them. Uh, those guys just continue to play hard. Um, there were there weren't a ton of uh, of issues from a communication standpoint. Uh, we did have a breakdown once when we put uh, put Mason in there. Uh, we should have squeezed the gap and, and got some pressure on the quarterback. But biggest thing is just just cleaning up some things technique wise. But we knew that uh, this front was going to challenge us and and just how multiple they are and uh, changing looks and and stunting and moving and picking and doing all that kind of stuff. You got to be technically sound. You got to communicate well. So as you look at it. Uh, they, they continue to play hard, uh, got some things in some areas to clean up from a technique standpoint, but, but definitely uh, a lot better uh, than they may, it may have felt, you know, coming off the field. Hey, Tony, it's Josh from the Post and Courier. How would you evaluate uh, Lynn J. Dixon's play so far this season? You know, I, I thought that, that uh, the other day was his best game. Uh, he, uh, he had one instance where I would like to see him, you know, not try to bounce to the outside uh, and bang it up in there and go get positive yards. Uh, we only had a couple of TFLs uh, in the game. Uh, I think we had, we had three, two, three, three true TFLs and then we had one bad snap. And one of those was on, was on Lin Jay because he made a decision to bounce, kind of predetermined it uh, and didn't, didn't read it out. But I thought he was, was doing exactly what I asked him to do. Uh, and overall, he's had, you know, he's had his moments where he's, he's done a good job of, of playing within the system. And, getting behind his pads and, and, and doing the dirty work. And, and I know that's a little bit, you know, out of his comfort zone uh, because he is a guy that likes to use his speed to get to the edge. Uh, so he's done a good job uh, at times, but still got to just, just be more consistent, solid in pass protection, uh, very, very knowledgeable. So, so don't have any issues with, with him there from a knowledge standpoint. Has to clean up his technique a little bit. You know, sometimes he'll be in great position and then the last morning he'll try to drop his shoulder just because he's trying to bring more, uh, bring more power with him. Uh, but he needs to trust his technique and use his hands. So overall, uh, more good, uh, still areas to improve, but, but I've been pleased with him so far. I believe you said that that backup job for, for Trav is still kind of up in the air. Is technique and consistency, are those kind of the big things you want to see from, from Lin Jay? Correct. Uh, technique, consistency, uh, you know, from him, because he's, he's, the, he's the second oldest in the room, so to speak, uh, uh, from an experience standpoint, played the most football behind, uh, behind Travis. And so just consistency and biggest thing for him, um, it's just challenging him to just, hey, don't worry about Travis. Focus on you. Uh, improve your game. Understand the system and understand things that you need to do improve to be able to play within the system. And uh, it's a, it's a, for all of them, it's a work in progress because they're so highly talented. Uh, they, they see a lot. And sometimes you got to make sure that they're not seeing too much because if they see too much and they try to do too much, and when you're doing too much, you're playing outside the, uh, the, the framework of the, of the system. Uh, so you may have some success. I tell them all the time, it's a catch-22. You may have some success, but uh, it's one of those situations where you better be right. You mentioned that you would tell him not to worry about Travis. Have you gotten the sense that he's really been sort of trying to elevate his game uh, to get to that point where, where Travis is? 
You know, I, when I say that, uh, I, what, I'm, what I mean by that is not, I don't think they're looking at Travis and trying to beat Travis, uh, but they all want to produce. They all want to, you know, help the team win. They all want to have, you know, big plays uh, in the running game. They want to be solid in pass protection. And sometimes they compress, you know, too much. And, and, and obviously, we all know what Travis is capable of. A lot of times he can turn something into nothing. Uh, and, and I think some of them can do that at the same time, too. But they got to also trust the system and not always try to, to, to force the big play. So when I say that, it's not so much that they're trying to be like Travis or, or that they feel pressure from Travis other than, man, they want to have they want to have some success. They want to have big plays. And uh, and, and sometimes you, you can swing for the fence. And, and a lot of times home run hitters are, are, are the guys that strike out a lot, too. Uh, so I'd rather them become, be more comfortable being a base hit, base hit guy. Uh, that's going to be able to over time control where he, you know, where he hits the ball and he can get some doubles and some triples and the home runs will come. Hey, Tony, it's Anna with Clemson 24 um, seven, six games in, where would you rank, I guess, wanting Frank and Joe um, to take that next step in terms of the pecking order of what you'd like to see going forward from this offense? You know, I think it, just starting with Joe, you know, I think it's, it's, it's unfair right now uh, to say that just because he's been battling uh, and just hasn't had as, as many opportunities. And, you know, Frank is a guy uh, that, that I think he's just going to get better. And, and it's unfortunate that they're at wide receiver U, so they're always going to draw comparisons uh, to other guys. Uh, but at the same time, too, as a coach, sometimes you just have to meet them where they are. And, and so don't really have, you know, a, a set expectation of where they are. We know the areas where they got to improve, and we just got to keep pushing you know, those guys in that right direction and they'll respond and they'll continue to improve. And, you know, as they improve, then, then they'll be able to, to, to be more productive, but it's hard to say, you know, I would like for them to be here because the, the circumstances are different. You know, it's, it's both of them were out for a little bit in fall camp uh, that put them back you know, because they were in a protocol situation. And then Joe's battling his deal. And I thought that he looked the best that he's looked in a while uh, the other day. Uh, and Frank is just continuing to, to, you know, to figure out, you know, how to, you know, just how to play. There's a lot of things, too, as a young guy, when you're a backup that you may not have, have experience with. And when you become a starter, uh, you know, the games move a little bit faster. Uh, there's a lot more things that you're experiencing. So, you know, pleased with both of them, but still going to push those guys to continue to improve uh, in every aspect of their game. Hey, Coach, it's Trevor again. Uh, BC is um, top 10 nationally in takeaways. Seems like every other week you're playing a team like that. Um, but, you know, surprisingly, Trevor has had the, the interceptions in the last two games. I know the, on, on Saturday was a little bit of bad luck. Um, but Travis has put the ball on the ground in the last two games. Um, ball, ball security is obviously always something that, that you emphasize. But um, is that one of the things you're really looking at this week to improve on? You know, that's I wouldn't say that just because, you know, BC is top 10 uh, in turnover margin. It's more a function of us and focusing on the details, you know, day in and day out and understand the importance of uh, taking care of the ball. And uh, obviously the one at Georgia Tech was 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 a bad decision by Trevor. And then he came right back and I think he completed a bunch of passes in a row. So so he overcame that the one uh, the other day, you know, he's trying to make a ball play. You know, it was a good call. Uh, he, he read it right. Uh, he was trying to he was trying to throw a little back shoulder to Amari and he, and he just slightly was off a little bit. Uh, so, so definitely not going to, you know, create uh, something bigger than what it is. And then Travis right there is something that we always talk about. But a lot of times you, 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 it doesn't come up in a game until it's a catastrophe. And what happened there is he was in a situation, he was trying to cut it back and he didn't expect Jackson to be there. He sees his own color. He relaxes a little bit. Boom, there's a collision balls on the ground. So we'll address that. Uh, but, but we're going to put the same uh, level of emphasis on ball security, as we always do, uh, and continue to do our part of taking care of the ball uh, and just work through uh, the, the fundamentals there and stress it, but, but not going to make it a, a bigger issue than what it is. Hey, Tony, it's Anna again. Um, I know you said after the game you wouldn't question Trevor's decision-making kind of in the RPO um, mm -hmm. and when to hand it off. Any instances, though, that stuck out in film you know, where you thought you could have? Right now, now looking back at it, there was there was one uh, that that could have been either or, uh, and he took a chance. There it was a second and two, um, and we had a, we had an RPO uh, there, and and could have handed the ball off, and uh, but he'd been having success, and up to that point, and for the rest of the game, I thought all the other decisions were, were really good. That probably be the only one where you say, hey, in this situation right here, when this look, if it's if it's that, if it's if it's that gray air, if it's that great, just go ahead and hand it off, and we'll be good to go. But other than that, I thought he did a really good job, and. You know, in the run game, uh, that's what, you know, sometimes people don't realize when you're built like, like we're built. Uh, you know, you can sit there and try and force the run, but Syracuse was committed to stopping the run with all their run-stopping twists inside, and then they were going to try and get an extra guy 
uh, to the box. So you have to take those uh, those outlet runs. And, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, people want to see the ball in Travis's hands. But at the same time, too, in fairness to Travis, if they're going to load the box or have guys and un unblock guy there, then we need to have the outlet screens and it loosens us up. And then as we go, uh, you see that we're able to start hitting those eight, seven, six, five-yard gains uh, a pop. Tony, this is Matt with the state. Um, did Syracuse do anything up front or, or schematically different against you guys than they had been showing on film some of the previous weeks? You know, they had a couple of alignments that were that were a little bit different, uh, but but I think what they did a much better job uh, this week of, of just staying disciplined in their gap uh, assignments. As I said before, you know, going into it, you know, those guys were, were they're going to challenge you in the run game, but I think a lot of times what happened in the past is they get out of a gap and, and then the back would find it. I thought they did a better job of of still bringing those twists, uh, but their D linemen not looping too far, not getting out of gaps, and not not creating those big those big running lanes. And then also too, I think it's a function of us taking you know outlet screens out on the out on the perimeter because they had that one extra coming. And if we had if we hand that off, there were there were some some plays that would really crease. Uh, but it's just that that's just how we're built, and, and you live with it, and you move on. And, and so, kind of following up on Anna, are there some instances in RPOs where the look says? To pass, but maybe if you if you would have handed it off, um, like there were holes, is that kind of no, no doubt? You know, no doubt there's going to be there's going to be instances like that, but you can't sit there and overanalyze it. Then you're going to then you're going to paralyze the quarterback, and then now he's going to start questioning his decision, and then now you're going to be sitting there playing slow either or. No, you say okay. These these are the parameters uh, for the look, and you know if this guy is is halfway in between, let's say the receiver and and the uh, and the box, he's probably a box fitter. Uh, by the time we hand the ball off at, at six, five and a half yards deep, uh, he can roll in to, and be unblocked and, and tackle us before we get going. So, yes, you're going you're gonna to throw the ball out there. But then there were some times, too, if, if he's a step late and you hand the ball off, then you're going to crease. So there's definitely going to be situations where you see uh, the looks telling you to pass it, and then you're going to look back at the film and say, hey, that was blocked about as good as it could be blocked. We probably would have had a, a good positive game. But that's, I mean, that's, that's the RPO world. You know, you can't, you can't tell the quarterback, you know, to second guess every look. Uh, he's got he's to get out there and play, trust what he's been coached to do, and then you gotta got to do a good job. Of, and what I think the, the positive is, is you look at the balls that we threw out there, man, we had some 10, 15 yard gains, you know, with the ball being thrown behind the line of scrimmage. So the guys on the perimeter are doing a good job of understanding what their responsibility is running with the football, and then more importantly, how we need to block things on the perimeter. Hey, Tony, this is Grace Rayner with The Athletic. Can you kind of walk us through how you guys discovered a Joe on the recruiting trail and what that process was like? Yeah, so it was, uh, it, it was very interesting because interesting, down there in the state of Florida, you know, there's a lot of, you know, obviously it's, it's a well-populated area, so there's all kind of public schools, all kind of private schools uh, throughout, uh, throughout that Tampa area. And so we got a, got a tip, just some video sent in on, on a guy that moved down from Canada. N neither myself nor Jeff had any experience with the school, uh, but since it was my recruiting area, I was responsible for going by to, to check it out. And, you know, I was a little bit there uh, just to be transparent and honest, because, you know, sometimes some of those schools are uh, you never heard of. You don't know how they're operated. You don't know the level of, of, of football. You don't know the level of academics. You just don't know a lot about them. So when, when Jeff found the, uh, found the video clip, he said, hey, if you're down there, go check it out. So then I went by the school and, and obviously at, at Clearwater, they do a, an unbelievable job um, uh, with, the, uh, with their setup. And so I was immediately impressed uh, when I walked in and had a chance to meet all the folks in the front office. And then the coach, the coach is an awesome guy. Um, you can tell he's an alumni of the school. Uh, he's been around it, so he was able to give me some background on what was going on. And then when, when you get a chance to see this guy, you know, working out in the weight room or, or running around on the field, you're like, wow, you know, just his, just his physical presence. Uh, and then he had an unbelievable smile. And that's kind of how it started. Uh, so really it was more, okay, let's, let's go find out more about the school. You know, we know that he's got some talent on film. Uh, but let's find out about the school. And once we were comfortable with the school, then Jeff kind of flew down, uh, went and saw him, and then that's really how the process started. How do you, I guess, evaluate, um, I don't know completely how to word this, but like when a kid is playing at a smaller school, how do you know that your, I guess your eyes aren't deceiving you? Well, I think that it's a combination of you go, you know, watch him in his environment, uh, watch him work out, uh, see kind of what his work ethic is, his interaction with his, uh, with his teammates, and you go watch him practice. Uh, just to validate uh, what, what you're seeing on Tate Mary's up. And then big thing is, you know, he, he came up and uh, came to camp and he spent a couple of days with us in camp. And then you're able to place him against other guys that, uh, that we're evaluating. Uh, so we know their, their level of uh, competition, their level of skill set. And then once you see him in camp, you're able to validate, you know, everything else that you need to see. And that's really how, it, this really how you, how you do it, especially when you get those guys from a smaller school. You, you'll, you'll take that into consideration, but you, at the same time, you don't want to penalize them until you get them into an environment where you can put them against, 
you know, guys that, uh, that, that you know the level of competition that they play at and see how they stack up. Tony, this is Matt again. With the Joe, how much of the offer with him was seeing his potential and what he could, be, could become? And, and how much do you feel like he can still grow as a player? And, and I guess what are the expect, expectations of what he can end up becoming for you guys? You know, I think a lot of it was was based off of off of his potential, based off of how he performed in uh, in camp. You know, this is you know wide receiver you, and so you had Jeff at the time, uh, Coach Sweeney. Uh, that's probably the uh, the hardest uh, position group to get approved because you got so many sets of eyes, and then I don't get to see him in camp, but I get to see him on film. And you know, sometimes uh, they would ask my opinion on uh, on those uh, receivers. And so what he did in camp, you know, illustrated that, man, this young man's got a ton of potential. Just the fact that he, he was natural catching the ball. Uh, he can run. He can jump. He's got those above the rim, you know, kind of skills that, that, that not many people have. Uh, but you knew that there was going to be a development process just from the technical aspect of, of, of the position. And then just overall, the technical aspect of learning how to play the game of football. Uh, at this at this level, but I think that that the sky's the limit for him. Uh, every day, you know, he's learning something new, and and in due time, you know, once it all starts to slow down and comes together, you know, I think you're going to have a have a special special young man. Tony, this is Larry again. Um, given that y'all are utilizing the middle of the field more this year in the passing game, have you have defenses sort of adjusted at all to to account for that and to try to uh, negate that? You know, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to say uh, because, you know, they, 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 were, they were switching it up. Defense is switching it up, and, and we got to try and match up the calls. And, and, and the way we want to attack is we want to try and give us the best option based off of coverage. So if it's a too high look, we got an answer for a too high. Uh, if it's a one high, one high look, we got an answer to, uh, to attack the, uh, the weaknesses in the defenses. So I don't know if they're, if they're compensating yet. Uh, I think they're, they're still playing their defense, uh, staying true to, true to themselves. We're just, you know, going through our progressions. And, and as we build our concepts, especially in our third down situations, we're trying to, trying to attack the whole field uh, and use our, use our personnel to create matchups. I guess the reason that popped into my mind was the, on, the, on the pick six, Trevor, it looked like he made a bad throw, but he actually said after the game that he saw the safety sitting on top of it in front of Amari, and he was trying to – throw a Correct. back shoulder throw so the right throw was probably a back throw shoulder just oh, too no far doubt. no doubt they spun to they spun to a one high and and you're working you're working the seams you know on that concept and, and you're trying to you know you're trying to make put that safety in a bind and and you got to pick which one and you know you felt like he had a better opportunity with Amari and he was trying to trying to slow it down and you know again he was just a little bit off a little bit too far behind you expect Amari to in that situation man to go make a go make a heck of a play uh, and, and again, the thing for, for the defender is like he was kind of out of position, the guy who, who picked off the ball and, and, and the mistake on our part with the throw and the, and the mishandling of the ball and not catching it, man, it pops right into his hands. So, so definitely made the right read, uh, just, a, just a little bit off from a, from a uh, technical standpoint with the placement of the ball. Otherwise, man, that's going to be a big play and we're rocking and rolling. Hey, Coach, it's Trevor again. The, uh, the, the throwback uh, to Trevor from Amari uh, was a lot of fun to watch. It, it looked like uh, if Amari put a little more air under, it might have been a touchdown, but I think you still got a first down out of it. What, um, what, what, did you, what defensive look did you see that, that made you like that call? And does the fact that Amari um, is, is a southpaw, does that kind of add to the surprise element, I guess? You know, it, it, when we build when we build a concept, we, we try to have it in both directions, uh, and it just married up. We saw that we were getting a lot of you know a lot of man coverage. Uh, so the biggest thing is you're looking for for man coverage where the quarterback can get lost a little bit, and and, and we saw that those guys were chasing on some things, uh, and it was a, it was kind of scripted for that area of the field, and it just so happened that it that it worked out that we got it called into the right defense, and definitely if Amari puts it out there on the quarterback, I think he has a chance to to possibly score on that play. About Amari being left-handed, does Amari being left-handed? Does that uh, you, do it keeps you think it keeps a it keeps a defense you know honest uh, because now they see you can go in, in both directions. Uh, so again, it, it helped to protect our system because you have the ability to put a, put a right-handed guy in there and roll to the right and throw back, and now you can go off the right hash and roll to the left and throw back. We'll take Thanks. one or two more for coach. Mm -hmm. Tony, Larry, uh, Larry again, what's your overall assessment of, of uh, first down production this season uh, through six games? 
you know, some games have been better uh, than others, and 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 I think we've been been aggressive. You know, sometimes on first down, uh, you know, trying to take shots uh, there, and then we've had some miscues. You know, on first down, that's gotten us uh, behind the chains. So definitely an area that that, that we want to continue to stress, um, uh, because for the long haul, you know, you know, you want to be efficient on first uh, first down so that you're not in a long yardage situations. We've been, you know. You know, surprisingly, you know, you know, pretty solid in, in long yards overcoming that, but that's something we still got to continue to stress. So, you know, some games have been better than others, uh, but definitely an opportunity for us to to grow. And, and and again, a lot of it is just you know unfortunate mishaps on our part, a misplay, you know, a misread here, uh, a breakdown in technique, all things that are correctable. Uh, so definitely not a concern, but something that we got to stress and something that we track and we got to continue to improve.